In the first century, Christ's message was revolutionary for the pagan societies of the time, particularly in the area of sexual morality. At the time of the writing of Revelation, the church in Thyatira was in crisis. The congregation had allowed a strange prophetess to work her way in, and she brought division through a variety of misleading teachings. They had accepted compromise by mixing their faith in Christ with the immoral sexual practices of the time. What can the letter to Thyatira teach us today about appropriate moral conduct in a society of loose morality? The letter to Thyatira is the longest of the seven letters in Revelation. Uh, this is the fourth now uh, of the seven churches. Its position is right in the middle, so it has a very strategic place. And in it also is mention of the other churches. So Jesus is using this particular uh, message uh, as an example to all the other churches. In closely scrutinizing the text, this is what strikes me. Nevertheless, I have this against you. You tolerate that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophet. By her teaching, she misleads my servants into sexual immorality and the eating of food sacrificed to idols. So I will cast her on a bed of suffering, and I will make those who commit adultery with her suffer intensely. The actual church of Thyatira does not receive much criticism. What is criticized strongly, uh, the reason for the letter being twice as long as the others, is a segment of this church, or a dissident part of this church, the followers who had latched unto the false prophetess Jezebel. In the church in Theatira, we have two groups of people. We have the majority group that seem to be following Jezebel, but there is the minority report, <laughs> the, the smaller group there that is staying true uh, to the Lord. According to Revelation, we are talking about a kind of prostitute who is exerting an influence over the believers in the Christian community of Thyatira. So who was this Jezebel who was dividing the church there? For the purpose of my investigation, I go to the town of Akazar, a few miles away from Bergama. Yeah, today uh, Theatira is the city of Akisar. Uh, at this very important road junction then that linked uh, Smyrna and uh, Constantinople in antiquity and uh, Pergamum and Sardis. So we see that the road connections that were existing in antiquity are still the tracks of the modern highways in Turkey today. So the topography, the geography doesn't change. Originally, Thyatira was a walled fortress aimed at protecting the town of Pergamos from inland. It was founded by the Seleucids as a military garrison. But later, during the Roman Empire, rather than being known for its military nature, it became a very important trading center. The modern-day town of Akazar, formerly Thyatira, is of very little archaeological interest today, as the old town is buried underneath the modern one. Thyatira is yet another town that is difficult to excavate, because it is inhabited. You can see that the modern-day town is completely built up. The few ruins left from the old city are here in the town center. But there is very little left. It is not easy to excavate in Tierra. 
There are very few places where archaeologists are allowed to dig. They do not find much. I've gotten used to much larger sites, but for now, I will content myself with this archaeological dig that is busy restoring an old Roman road. Yavu Salem, a member of the team involved in the archaeological dig, describes the area to me. In the midst of all the buildings, up there on the cemetery site on the hill, we can clearly see a basilica dating from between the 2nd and 6th centuries AD. We can also confirm that the road with colonnades, which dates between the 2nd and 4th centuries and associated with the Roman era, and it is one of the most significant structures on the site. Apart from my interest in the arches that are being restored, I do not gather much useful information for my investigation. Jezebel has nothing to do with archaeology, as she is only mentioned in the Bible text. I ask you views if she really existed, or if she was just a myth. As it appears, we do not have any concrete proof about this. I know that Jezebel was a woman who firmly encouraged prostitution with a view of destroying Christianity. You could say that her actions were not very salutary. I'm not surprised that he does not know much more. However, I also discovered that Thyatira was well known for its craft industry. For its ceramics, leather and bronze, its slave trade and also its fabric production. Tiatira was a very important place for textiles and the production and export of its well-known purple cloth. In Tiatara, inscriptions have been found that talk of the wealth of the city as a supplier of wool and purple cloth. In ancient times, purple dye was produced using a specific extraction process. This involved crushing small murex shells found in the Mediterranean Sea. Le pour purple is produced from a shellfish, the murex. So the shells are collected and they produce a range of colors, including reds, violets, and a few shades of green. It is expensive to produce purple, which is a pigment. One shell would not provide more than a single drop of color. So to dye a piece of clothing, they needed thousands of shells, which meant that an article dyed in this way was of more value than gold. Cloth dyed purple was extremely precious in ancient times. Only the richest families could own such items. The Romans used these dyes on their togas. Uh, you could tell the status of an individual by how much purple, how much color they had on their togas. And uh, the emperor's family, they could wear uh, togas and uh, clothing entirely in purple, showing their the imperial family. The Gospels show us clearly the social importance of this color. Just before Jesus' crucifixion, out of disdain, the Roman soldiers clothed him in a crown of thorns and a purple garment. They started mocking him, saying he was the king of the Jews. It is obvious that these Roman soldiers tried to dress Jesus as a king so they could mock him. To do that, they gave him a robe that was purple. Purple continues to be a color associated with royalty and priesthood in the Christian world. Today, the few visible vestiges of the old city no longer reflect the variety of trades piled in its past, and even less the fortress that it originally was. Nor can I see any traces of the purple dye industry either, only street stalls and a few clothing stores in downtown Akazar. I buy this purple cloth as a souvenir from a street trader. The New Testament mentions Thyatira once more. The Book of Acts made famous a certain seller of purple cloth, someone actually from Thyatira, Lydia. She lived in the town of Philippi in Greece. She was uh, representing her trade guild probably 